Hello again, it's great to be with you. I, I hope you're having a fantastic day today. We are working our way through uh, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. And we're currently in chapter uh, 2. And today we're going to look at the, the last few verses, uh, 25 through to 30, in that first chapter. So Paul writes this, he says, But I think it is necessar necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that you may see him again. You may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honour people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. It's really difficult to uh, extract the full depth of meaning from the, from the things that Paul's saying here. Um, the way that the words are tr translated in, uh, from the original Greek in this, these uh, Bible versions don't really do the passage the justice that they deserve. In essence, Paul and his fellow co-workers were constantly putting their lives at risk in the work that they did. Paul, as he wrote this letter, was facing trial for the work that he'd been doing. Epaphroditus had been extremely ill and almost died as a result of his work. And yet now, after he'd recovered, Paul had tasked him with the work of returning to Philippi to carry messages backwards and forwards. These were people who risked everything for the gospel at a time when worshipping God as a Christian could result in death. And that's the reality of the situation. In their time, there was a group of people, a, a kind of fellowship, who were called the Parabola, para, Parabolami, uh, which just means the gamblers. They were people whose aim it was to visit the sick and the dying, and people who were in prison, people who had infectious diseases that nobody else would go to. They went in order to make sure that those people were provided for and prayed with. It was akin to an almost reckless process of uh, staking everything on a single throw of the dice. And that's what they did. They put themselves in dangerous places for the sake of the gospel. When you compare their work with our modern era uh, and a much more tolerant culture, we might ask ourselves, well, how much am I prepared to risk for the sake of the gospel? How much am I prepared to put myself out so that the gospel can be shared with other people? How much am I prepared to sacrifice from my own freedom, my own time and my own resources in order to ensure that those who don't know Jesus yet and the finished work of the cross get to hear what he did for each of us? And I know that's a really hard question to answer, but it is a question that we should all be asking ourselves. We should be saying, how much can I do? What can I sacrifice? What do I need to sacrifice so that other people can be saved? Because that's what the gospel is about. It's about saving people for all of eternity. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus, help us to examine ourselves asking these questions so that we might give truthful and honest answers. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to see the places where we have become comfortable and secure, that we might know what it might take to reach those around us, to bless those who are in need, to minister to those who are sick or who, do, who yet need to find salvation. So Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon us today, that you bless us and anoint us and challenge us to be more than we are uh, of our own strength. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.